Let's look at interest rate swaps. Interest rate swaps. So what is an interest rate swap? You have two parties, A and B, and they agree to swap interest payments. And so one example is fixed and floating interest payments. A pays fixed, and then B gets fixed, and B pays floating, and A gets the floating. Drawing some arrows, straight arrow here is the fixed rate, and a wavy arrow here is the floating rate. Okay, so A is paying a fixed rate of interest every time period to B, and B is paying the floating rate of interest every time period back to A. So as the interest rate fluctuates, you know, people will win and lose and the payments will, will change. All right, how do we value this? So the way to get started is to look at the definition of interest. So here's $1 at time zero. That's equivalent to $1 tomorrow. So a dollar today is equal to a dollar tomorrow plus interest. So here, you know, the dollar today, dollar tomorrow plus interest. These are the same by a definition of interest. Now we can subtract a dollar tomorrow from both sides. So I'm just taking off a dollar tomorrow from both sides and that gives me just the floating rate tomorrow on the right side. So a dollar today paying back tomorrow is equal to the interest rate on the dollar received tomorrow. So here's a nice little relationship that lets us convert between floating interest rate and fixed payments over time. And we can use this now to do a bunch of payments. So let's do a series of floating payments. So here is a, a series of four floating interest rate payments. And you can see I'm drawing them different heights because the, the floating rate could be changing. So sometimes interest rate's low and sometimes it's high. Now we can rewrite this. So the first payment here, using this relation, converting floating payment into two fixed payments, we can write that as up, down. Now the second one will be up, down, using that same relation. And the third one will be up, down. And the last one will be up, down. And you can see all these middle ones cancel out. And so we get just up, down. So this is pretty cool. This is a relationship between floating interest rate payments and fixed payments. So receiving multiple floating ro rate payments over time is equivalent to uh, getting, the, getting a dollar now and then paying it back at the end of the floating interest rate payments. So that's, that's neat. We can actually write a formula for this too. So the formula here is, these are, these are two fixed payments, so these are two zero coupon bonds. This is Z at time zero minus Z at time TN. This is like the time of the last uh, floating payment. And the zero coupon bond today is just a dollar. We're normalizing everything to one dollar here. So it'll be one minus Z of zero coupon bond maturing at time TN. So here's how we value a series of floating payments. Now, what about valuing the swap? So the value of the swap, we'll call that V of T, and we have to choose a, a direction. So we'll say uh, for B. So let's look back up here. So B is receiving the fixed payments and paying the floating payments. And so the, the value of the swap for B, from B's point of view, they're receiving the fixed payments. So we have a, a term here, 
So R of S, this will be the inter the fixed interest rate. Tau will be the, the time period between payments. So this, this just normalizes the annual interest rate into the interest rate over the time period. Then there'll be a sum of all the payments. So I equals one to N of, and then every payment is a fixed uh, interest payment. And so I can just write that as a zero coupon bond and it'll be T, TI. Okay, so this is the fixed part. So let's write all those pieces again just to keep it clear. So this is the fixed rate. This is the period. And then these are the payments. Then the floating part will be a negative for B. So B was going back up here. So B is paying the floating part. So we have to subtract and the floating payments, we did the calculation over here, it's one minus C of T N. So we have fixed and floating. All right, so that's kind of cool. We can value a swap and generally the swaps are constructed so that at time zero, the value to both parties is zero, so they're balanced. So how do we how do we do that? We can choose the fixed rate to make the the expected value to both parties be zero. So we solve for RS, and if you do that, you get RS tau times the sum of the z's. Um, just moving things around here. And then divide. So it'll be one minus C T N over tau times the sum I equals one to N of the T I payments. Okay, so this is how to value a swap. So that's pretty cool. And so the market actually gives us the market gives us many different RS values for different T values. So for lots of different time periods and different numbers of payments, we can see what the interest, the fixed interest rates of the swaps are trading for. From there, we can work backwards. So then work backwards to get the yield curve. Because actually, I, I didn't know this, but swaps are a, a huge market and they're actually more liquid and it's a bigger market than the bond market. So the bond market is the obvious way that you'd figure out to get the yield curve, but because swaps are so liquid and so highly traded, it's actually better to use the swaps market and you know, do some bootstrapping to get the, the yield curve. So bootstrapping. So how do we get the yield curve from the market data? That's the question. And it seems like it's not really possible because everything is in terms of these zero coupon bonds and we don't know the, the interest rates for the zero coupon bonds, but there actually is a way to do it. So what do we do first? So the, the steps to bootstrapping are first, start with the shortest time period. So we'll call that T1 and solve for Z. So let's look at our equation here. So we, we know RS, so let's, let's write this down. So we have RS equals one minus Z of T. And then if we're just looking at the shortest swap, this will just be T1. And this will be tau 
And the sum here will just be one term. It'll be z of t1. And now we, we know this from the market and we solve for this. So this is known. Solve for z. Okay, and so given that, we, we now know z of t1. Now for step two, you move up to the next t. So in this case, it'll be t2. And so from our formula for valuation, we have rs equals one minus z of t2 over tau times sum z of t1 plus z of t2. Just writing out the, the explicit sum for, for two steps. And so now we know this value. We know this, we don't know this value. We do know this and we don't know this. So here we're solving for z of t2 and these are known. So this one comes from the market. This one we just solve for up here and you know, we work, basically we're working step by step. So our base case is the shortest time period and we, ex we solve that explicitly. Then for longer time steps, we just work, work up step by step and use all our previous solutions to solve the next step. And, you know, step three, keep going until you've solved it for all the different times. So you just keep repeating this and keep getting longer and longer times until you've solved the values of Z for all the different time steps. And now you have uh, the market valuations of all the different zero coupon bonds for different time periods. And that gives you the yield curve. So this is very cool. This is a, so we've been looking at interest rate swaps. So what is an interest rate swap? It's swapping interest payments. Now we looked at the relation between floating interest rate payments and fixed payments at different times. So we did this cool little uh, arrow calculation where we converted a series of floating payments into just two fixed payments at different times. And we use that to get a model independent valuation of a, the value of a swap, which is the, you know, the fixed payments and the floating payments. Then, you know, based on the way the market behaves, we use the market data that exists and work backwards using bootstrapping. And we figured out the values of all the different zero coupon bonds, you know, that the, the way the market's valuing them. And that gives us the yield curve. So this is very cool.